Ladies and gentlemen, the powers that be in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, the city of brotherly love. Yeah, I bet. Well, anyway, they have come up with yet another stupid bill called the driving equality bill. If I hear that word equality one more time, I am going to jump off the Golden Gate Bridge. The driving equality bill. I'm getting ready to jump right now. Not only have the Philadelphia city legislation come up with this stupid bill, but they have passed it by a 14 to 2 count. A 14 to 2 count. Now, what is the driving equality bill? I'll let you know. You know that's coming down the pike. But first of all, just to let you know, just to refresh your memory, driving is a privilege, not a right. If you have your ducks lined in a row, if you have your registration intact, if your driver's license is valid, if you have your parking ticket situation under control, then you are granted that privilege to do what you need to do. If you don't, then you do not have and you should not have that privilege to drive. Because many people who don't have their ducks lined up in a row in that particular aspect, they do not have that for underlying reasons. Like they haven't paid their child support. They cannot get their registration because they have outstanding parking tickets or they have a felony or something like that. That is why they have expired tags and expired licenses and whatnot. This is a law that will also be adopted by other dangerous, lenient, liberal cities. Do I need to go down the list to tell you? No, I don't think I need to. You can figure them out yourself. It's pretty much every large city in the United States. They're going to adopt this. And this is, this is going to be a detriment and a danger to law-abiding citizens. Everybody, everybody will be affected by this. And guess what? People of color are the ones who are expected to benefit from this. As far as not being able or not being subject to being stopped and being searched and being singled out and profiled and all those little buzzwords that you know I'm talking about. So anyway... Let me get to the real story. Let me get to my introduction. All of that and more is coming up next on The Fabulous Form Factor. Want to hear something fabulous? Broadcast in a forum and full of facts? Well, you've come to the right place. It's The Fabulous Forum Factor podcast with all its pizzazz. And now here's your host, Mr. Kenneth Moultrie. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the fabulous Forum Factor here on this Friday, October 22nd, 2021. And I'm your host, Mr. Kenneth Anthony Moultrie. And I want to thank you for joining me. Thank you for all your support. As I dive into the subject today, somewhere around episode number 101. So let's get right to it. <laughs> I don't even know if I want to say that word. It leaves a bad taste in my mouth. The driving equality bill. Let me just tell you in a nutshell, before I get to all my surprises in the Cracker Jack box of, what, of how I feel about this. So basically what this is, ladies and gentlemen, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania has been the first, is now the first, large city, so-called large city in America. I think Berkeley, California, 
uh, a place that's close and dear to my heart. Well, it's not dear to my heart, but it's close in proximity to where I grew up at. But Berkeley was the very first uh, city in the United States to do this. Uh, are you surprised? <laughs> Berkeley? Okay. So what it is, basically, it's a bill that is supposed to cut out pro, pro, what they call profiling. Okay, so in other words, when you're driving, we're talking about people of color, mainly black people, and they're driving and they have things like an expired tag or they have a busted taillight or they have some type of object dangling from their rear view mirror or however or whatever that you deem or that is deemed minor. That is what they are trying to eliminate because what they're what they're focusing on is what the powers that be in these towns like Philadelphia, cities like Philadelphia, they're trying to focus on police encounters because they're saying that once someone is stopped for something minor, then it tends to escalate. And in a lot of cases, it's turned into a killing, a homicide. So what their idea is like, okay. Why have a busted taillight be the cause or the initial cause for someone getting hurt or killed? I have, of course, I have an answer for that. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I don't even know where to start here, but let me let me just let me just go in where I think I can fit in. When a motorist is stopped by law enforcement, and they do, and that motorist does not have anything against him or her. In other words, you don't have any outstanding warrants. Your driver's license is valid. You have paid your tickets, whatnot. You're, you know, you may not be squeaky, squeaky, squeaky clean, but you don't, you know, the, the feds are not looking for you. You don't have uh, a bunch of uh, drugs in the car. You don't have all these other things going on. So if a police officer stops you just for a traffic violation, then what are you nervous about? You know, there, there's no, there, there's no reason to be nervous if you are pulled over for just, it can just, it can be speeding as long as it's not like 150 miles an hour. Just if you're exceeding the speed limit, that's just something that's going to be a sight and release, you know, just check you out, you know, because <laughs> let's face this, Timoth <laughs> Timothy McVeigh, right? You know, the Oklahoma City bomber, right? Who killed all those people in Oklahoma City in 1995. The, how he was caught was he was driving a, uh, one of those moving vans that he, you know, he loaded up with all the, the bomb and stuff like that and all those, you know, explosives. And he was pulled over for, they were pulled over expired tags. And so now that's kind of an extreme or different situation. But what the point I'm trying to make is that when you, when someone is pulled over by, for expired tags, more often than not, it's not, it's, it's not because they just forgot or they just didn't have the money to do it. Because, ladies and gentlemen, if you are driving a car and you are putting gas in your car and you're doing the everyday things of life, like, you know, working or some kind of income you're having to put food on your table, then your registration is not going to be any more than $150, 100 some, somewhere in there, right? $150 at the most. Sometimes it can be $200, depending on the type of vehicle you have. So if your if your registration is $200 plus, then you do have somewhat of a new vehicle and therefore you have probably payments on it and you can afford it or you think you can afford it and that's what you're doing. The point I'm trying to make is that when a lot of people have expired tags, it's because they cannot pay it for some underlying reasons like they have felonies, like they have child support issues, they're wanted, all kind of different stuff. They're not just running around with a, a, a tag that's, you know, that's expired because they forgot. A busted taillight can mean somewhat of the same thing, you know. 
they don't want to go get that fix, right? It's not worth it to them, right? Because they're doing probably some ill will or something like that. And as far as the dice and the stuff hanging from the rearview mirror, what that supposedly got Dante Wright in trouble. No, he was pulled over for, I'm talking about Dante Wright in New Brooklyn, uh, New Brooklyn, Minnesota, I think it was called where he was shot and killed accidentally by that police officer, but he tried to run because he had warrants and a felony out for his arrest. That is why he could not go to the Department of Motor Vehicles in Minneapolis or wherever he lived to get that because they wouldn't give it to him because the first thing they're going to do, he's going to show them their license and his ID. And first of all, it's going to be expired. And he ain't going to be able to get it from then. And then if they pull his name up through there, it's going to show that he has warrants. And he knows that. They all know that. That's why they can't get the tags. So this bill, this stupid bill that's coming down the ranks saying that, oh, uh, you can't uh, pull over people for expired tags or some minor fractions. What what do you think that's doing? You're letting criminals, you're you're letting criminals go. And just because the infraction of a sp- an expired tag is not a crime right at the at the moment. The reason, like I just mentioned earlier, that th- it is expired is because they're probably doing some ill will anyway. They don't take care. Th- people like that don't take care of their business. Not at all. You want to hear some liberalism? Okay, here it comes. Criminal criminologist and law professor. Jordan Blair Woods, he believes that police should be totally exempt from giving traffic tickets anyway. It should be left up to some cameras and things and the the citations and whatnot can be sent in the mail. So rather than police, let's say, stopping you for a taillight violation or an equipment violation or a stop sign violation, you would have um, these civil employees or these traffic monitors who are essentially conducting the same tasks. Um, But the difference is that the traffic stop would stop and end at that traffic violation. Nearly 19 million drivers were stopped by police in 2018. Wood says if most or all of those encounters were eliminated, unnecessary confrontations could be avoided. They just did- so before I move on, ladies and gentlemen, to comment on just this stupid, uh, this stupid measure, this stupid bill, and 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 what Mr. Uh, Jordan Blair Woods just said, this is all this is to do is pandering to people of color, particularly black people. Because once again, we're living in a world where people of the system or people in charge, especially in liberal cities, they don't want to be called or deemed racist. That's the worst thing you can be called in the world. A child pedophile is higher on the list than a so-called racist. So everything they can do that's going to put us in danger as law-abiding citizens but as long as they don't feel like, oh, they're being uh, harassed or, or, or picked on because of their skin color. I've never felt that way. I've been pulled over somewhere between 10 and 12 times in my life. And I've received citations. But, you know, I pretty much had my ducks lined in a row. Never feared for my life. The little situations that you hear where people have did things like that. Let's start with George Floyd, okay? You all feel sorry for George Floyd, full of fentanyl, full of, full of drugs, warrants and everything going, in, you know, going against him. He and his wife, he was never going back to jail that particular day. He had made his mind, he made his mind up that he was fighting not to go back to jail. All you saw was the neck on, uh, the, the, neck on uh, the knee on his neck for however long. But he could have avoided that 45 minutes before that, when those Minneapolis police officers were trying to get him in the car, he was resisting. He was resisting. That is the common denominator. I have mentioned this on some of my episodes many, many times. Same with Dante Wright. I just touched on that a few seconds ago. Dante Wright was in Brooklyn Center, Minnesota. He was driving with expired tags. And you know why the tags were expired? Because he couldn't get them renewed. So that's an alert. And this is what they're trying to cut out. Okay? 
So he was pulled over. He knew he was in trouble. He knew he had warrants. He knew he had drugs. He knew his license was expired. He knew he was in trouble. So he was trying to get out of it. He caused that on himself, not so much by having that situations or those situations against him, but by running and resisting. Because like I've said before, too, when a felon is fleeing in a vehicle, that is like a missile, just like those idiots did on 9-11 when they crashed those missiles into building. Because when people are trying to get away from police and they got warrants and they got all kind of things going against them, and they're not thinking about going back to jail. They're running through rich traffic signals. They're running through stop signs. They're cutting corners. And that car, that vehicle or truck or SUV that they're in is a doggone missile. It is a deadly weapon. That's why you cannot let them free because they're going to do everything in their power to get away. And if it causes somebody to run somebody over, one of your relatives or kill somebody, oh, kill, kill somebody, oh, well. They don't care. They're just trying to get away. But this bill that's trying to pander to people of color to make them feel like, oh, we're not ready. Why should why you you're you're you they're you're doing too many things to separate us, to make you to make everybody feel like they're different. When you want to feel like you're the same and when you want to be treated the same. Why do you have to put, you know, so people are gonna be running around with, you know expired tags and expired driver's license. It's all kind of reasons why these things, I mean, you all need to understand this if you don't already. It's, it, it's happening. It happens too much. It's happening all the time. And you might feel good because, oh, uh, it's not rape, racially profiled. What, what, do, what do you care if somebody is racial, what, racially profiled? It's just it's a matter of opinion. It's not you. They're racially profiled. So back to the first part, the city of brotherly love in Philadelphia. There, uh, when they when they came up with this bill and they passed this bill, uh, local news stations picked this up. And let's just hear their report. They have some very very gaudy figures here. Heard it. Yeah, take a look at this. According to the Defender Association of Philadelphia, black drivers are pulled over by police seventy two percent of the time for minor traffic violations while comprising only 43 percent of the city's population but a new bill recently passed by city council may soon change this the driving equality bill introduced by council member isaiah thomas will make it illegal for officers to stop people for misdemeanors such as a broken taillight okay so according well it's not it's not so much according to the uh, news report these are actual facts there are 74, 75% of drivers that are pulled over for these type infractions are people of color, are black people, black Americans, what have you. That is true. What's also true that you heard in that little clip is that Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, for many, many years, was predominantly black. It was 55% black by the census reports from 1980 to 2015. Now, as you heard, the black population in Philadelphia is 43%. That's 10% or more lost in the last five years. Why don't you put your thinking cap on a few seconds and figure out why do you think the black population in not only Philadelphia, but a lot of major cities have dropped? Let me give you three or four seconds. Okay, time's up. I invite you to visit a website on the internet called gunmemorial.org. Just like it sounds, gunmemorial.org. And you can pull that up and you can put in any city in America and it'll show you photos and it'll give you a cause of most of the deaths on there that was attributed to just gun violence. Just gun violence. Pull up Philadelphia in this particular case, and if you don't believe me, see what I'm talking about. This year alone in Philadelphia, they are, they are, they are reaching, they're going to have over 350 
murders with guns in Philadelphia. It's not including knives or fights or anything like that. 95% of the homicide victim, that means when you are killed, 95% of the homicide victims in just Philadelphia are black. Want to guess the suspects and the perpetrators? Yeah, they're black too. They're like 97%. Okay? 97%. So that's basically damn near everybody. And you want to talk about uh, a, a traffic reform or traffic stop uh, equality bill. That's not your problem, and that's not the problem in the United States. The problem in the United States is 13% of the population that are committing most of the murders and all the most of the ill will. That is why a lot of these are the same offenders who are being stopped because they are just criminals and they don't have their ducks lined up in a row. So if I go back to the guy from Berkeley, he would he will say, well, you know, we're going to do the cameras and stuff like that. And we're going to send the ticket to your house because we don't want the contact and stuff like this. How many are these criminals out there? You think they have an address? They're living, you know, they're living in the basement somewhere. There's some of them living in their car, some of them living in drug houses, some of them living in dope houses, some of them living in. Uh, gang houses. They don't have a physical address. You think they're getting up and going to a nine to five every day? You think they got a W-2? Where are you going to send it to? You're going to send it to one of their parents' house? What are they going to do? That's not going to get paid. So you're going to have all these hoodlums continue to run around because you scared and you passed this stupid bill not to stop them for an infraction like a uh, 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 expired plate or something like that, which can lead to anything that I just mentioned before expired insurance. Okay. How many people you think riding around, let me think of you think these criminals are riding around fully, fully insured none. And now what do you think they're going to do? Why would you think they're going to do? They just, they're going to eat this up. This, this whole, this whole country is just turning soft and they're pandering to criminals. Remember Rayshard Brooks in Atlanta, the guy who was stopped at the drive through about a couple years ago, or maybe it was in the last year, 2020, stopped at the drive through and the cop was being all nice to him, and he was taking the cop along for a BS ride, like, oh, yeah, I'm just, you know, I'm just sleeping off, I had some beers and, and all this kind of stuff, and everything was good because the cop was really, you know, the officer was nice to him, and you know, everything seemed to be going well, until Rayshard Brooks tried to take the officer's, well, actually, he did take the officer's taser and shot at the officer. That's called resisting. So all these are going under the category of dangerous traffic stop. What, what do you think Rayshard Brooks was, resist, Rayshard Brooks were, was resisting for? It wasn't because he didn't want to go to jail. He didn't want to go to jail again and again and again because he had already been to jail 24 times, and that's not an exaggeration. So these hoodlums are, do not want to go back to prison. They do not want to go back to jail because there's no light at the end of the tunnel for them. So what they do, they know now that all they have to do is, is, is put up some type of resistance. And as long as it looks kind of suspect and it can go either way, then either they're going to get paid or their family going to get paid because all these liberal cities are going to come out and they're going to side with the hoodlum. And all that's doing is having a backlash against cops who are now retiring early. They're quitting early. They're changing forces. They're getting out of the field altogether. And this place, this country has now become a freaking war zone. And if you don't think that crime has, has like been at an all-time high just in 2021, even the last part of 2020, even in the 2021, this place, the United States, is a war zone. It is an absolute war zone. Murders, carjackings. There's a police officer in Chicago who was off-duty, or I think it was Philadelphia, actually. Off-duty police officer carjacked at gunpoint. Now, if he would have shot the hoodlum that did that and killed them, these people would have been out there marching. Been out there marching. They can do no wrong. And you got and, and people who are, are for this, you're letting it happen. So if you have these cameras 
that are up like many of them are right now. But these cameras are now supposed to be the law enforcement for traffic citations. And you have these particular uh, non-sworn uh, citizens who, who are not carrying weapons. Let's see how far that'll get them, right? And you pull somebody over because they have a traffic violation. I mean, now they know that they, the other person doesn't have a gun. Another person knows that there's not going to be any backlash. What do you think they're going to do? Let me let somebody tell you who's the only person that made sense in this whole particular deal. I think you'll see a segment of the society that is going to be less respectful and less fearful of the consequences of breaking those traffic rules. And that's going to make us less safe on the road. Police organizations say traffic stops are among the most dangerous responsibilities officers have and a critical tool to cracking down on criminals. Those have been very, very, very effective in taking guns off the streets of this country. That's right. Just like he said, someone gets pulled over by one of these non-sworn citizens who aren't armed and they have uh, they, they get pulled over for a speeding ticket or something and they uh, don't want to pay the speeding ticket because their insurance is going to go up. Like he said, they're just going to drive off and there's nothing that can be done. Yeah, they might get a license plate or something like that. And once again, where are you going to send a citation to to one of these hoodlums? You think they just live at 123 Main Street, USA? And it's just going to come right to them and they're just going to go down there and pay when they've been defiant all their adult life. What do you think is going to happen? I'm, you know, like I said, this, you know, I can go on and on on this particular subject. But like I said, I think I'm going to end it right here. I actually had a few more sound bites, but, you know, I don't want to beat a dead horse. And all I'm just going to do is end on this, ladies and gentlemen. This this liberalism and this leniency in this particular country is going to get you, me or somebody in your family, loved ones, if it hasn't already. And I know I'm talking to people it's already happened to, you know, you're, you're not we're not holding people accountable. We're not holding criminals accountable because they know that they're just going to get an ankle brace on their ankle and their and their case is going to be shoved back down the line for a year at least. And then when it does finally come up, if there is no witnesses and everything is forgotten with covid and all this kind of stuff going on, it's just going to be thrown out and they know it. They know it. The criminals are running the asylum. The prisoners are running the asylum. All these smash and grabs that's going on in cities all over the United States, especially San Francisco, where they're closing down Walgreens and CBS and Rite Aids because they put a limit on how much the police are going to come and, and, and prosecute or charge these criminals. A thousand dollars so you can actually go into one of those stores and you can, you know, just grab nine hundred dollars worth of things. And as long as it's not a thousand dollars, you just scot free. There's just, you know, they might get a picture of you or something like that. And, you know, that's it. That's it. That's all they can do. And you know it. And so what you going to do? Nothing can be done about it. So all and, you know, people are losing their jobs because, you know, People who need those jobs, you know, they're closing the city, the, the CVSs and these drugstores and things like that, because leniency is allowed the criminals to become emboldened when it comes to murders, carjackings, things like that. Social media, these carjackings now have become like they've become like a doggone contest, a game, the knockout game. If you don't know what the knockout game is, look it up. All of this is all of this is just, you know, the, these criminals know that they're not going to be prosecuted. And even if they kill somebody, the chances are they're going to probably get away with it. So anyway, like I said, I'm going to end this particular episode of the Fabulous Form Factor. Uh, thank you for listening. Stay tuned again for another episode in the near future. Uh, give me an email shout and tell me what you think about this. Uh, am I overreacting? Uh, am I point? Am I spot on? Let me know. I will uh, appreciate it. Thank you again for listening. This is Kenneth Moultrie of the Fabulous Forum Factor. Take care. Bye. Were you entertained? Were you informed? If the answer is yes to both, 
Please tune in again next time to the fabulous Forum Factor and all its facts with Mr. Kenneth Moultrie.